is something I, I wanted to show you really interesting. I feel success. He's a mother of cryptography. Do you know who Satoshi is? Me. Everybody's gonna go to the pub. <laughs> Face the ship yeah. on Thursday. <laughs> is this your yacht over here? Oh yes. Here we are in London, England. We're right near the Tower Bridge and right on the Thames. And we're here to meet the CEO of a crypto exchange. Maybe it's his yacht over here, or maybe not. We're gonna go ask him. One thing that I really love about this city is the kind of architecture. Some of it's very, very old, and some of it's very, very new. But there's not a lot of contrast between them. It really flows seamlessly together. I love this city. Okay, here we go. Do you feel crypto success? I feel success. Hey, George. How are you? Wow, what an awesome place. Oh, we have a, we have a beautiful weather today as well in London. Yeah, I, I can see. So what, this is uh, kind of your typical morning here? You come out here for your coffee and... When I stay here in between the travel, when it's, mm. when it's easy to, to commute and uh, we have lots of people coming over from different places. Mm -hmm. We figured we'll, we'll, we'll save a lot of money by having an apartment versus... Got a great view of the London Bridge over here. Yeah, it's really beautiful here. So is this your yacht over here? We were wondering. I wish, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I'm saving on it. <laughs> Touch up my coffee. Refresh. Yeah. Warm it up. There's no rum there or whiskey. Just so you It's know. okay. It's a little <laughs> early for that. But I was here last year actually, and I noticed, um, you know, Brits like to drink pretty early actually, like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Oh, yeah. If the sun is down, it's like. It's a big myth that Russians drink a lot. I mean, when I when I saw the uh, how much Brits drink, I think a pint for for lunch is absolutely normal. Really? Wow. It's you know liquid diet uh, uh -huh. type of thing. Huh. So and today's Thursday is a big is a big uh, big night out. Everybody's everybody's gonna go to the pub. Really? Do they're, they work on Friday? Oh yes. Really? <laughs> well, if you can call it work, yes. Uh, I see. <laughs> so where are we headed? Uh, going to the office. Okay. It's a short, fifteen-minute walk to be through St. Catherine Docks. We had a meetup in our office, and uh, that happened to be the warmest day of, of, of the summer. Really? It was, uh, you know it was when like that was? 34 degrees that was in July. And that day, at around 2 o'clock, our air conditioning went off. It, oh, died. it died on us. In the office? In the office, when oh, we no. had the meetup oh, in no. the evening. Our friends from uh, Craft Beer Coin, uh -huh. they brought in a keg of ice cold beer, Ooh. and it, it, saved, it saved the night, actually. Yeah, it was, that, it was, it was that'll very save you. It was so much chill. <laughs> Oh have wow, yeah. Here. <laughs> Who are these guys? Is there a parade or something? Yeah, it looks like a parade. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's anything going on in particular today, but... Uh-huh. That's the uh, St. Catherine's docks. It's all here, yeah? Well, there's been a lot of wharfs and there. They, you can see the, uh, the cranes are still, still operational uh -huh. and hanging uh -huh. out there, although it's probably been taken up by WeWork or some other... Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a fintech company or something like that, so... See, the, uh, the names of the boats here are very much in the, uh, very much English names. Money Penny, Ship, fa just... ship Faced. Yeah, Ship Faced. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> yeah. well, it's Thursday today, right? So. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so our office is just right outside of the wall. This was like the, the old city center, yeah? Correct, yeah. You know, that's where Jack the Ripper has been operating and, uh, and all we see the parts of the I <laughs> gotcha. The underground, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to this. This is my ringtone, or like my alarm. Really? Well, it's time to wake up, Max. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, it is mine. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> Welcome to Beek Quant. Beek Group. Oh, look who's here. Oh. One of our contractor employees as well. And I'm a huge dog guy. I, my dog at home. I've been missing him. Him or her? Pippin. Pippin, come here. Oh. <laughs> We 
we see we are very pet friendly and uh -huh. we have a ping pong table. So that, that allows for people to kind of, uh, you know, work and relax and uh, do their best. And uh, yeah, so this is a little symbol of the of the industry, I guess. The, the dog years. I always say it's the industry is moving so fast, and it's it's more like a, you know we're living one year like a dog year. Mm. It's things you do in the in the span of uh, one year, it's the same as in traditional world for you know seven years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just seven times as fast. And that, much more dynamic for sure. Yeah. Right. I wonder how does the traditional financial markets, you know, here in London, all the old guard, if you will, how do they see disruptive crypto businesses? Yeah, that's a great question. And just to go back to your point about crypto world um, in terms of the language, for me, it's an additional asset class to learn. Crypto versus, the, you know, equities, bonds, um, FX, etc. So there are a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of unique terminology in crypto world because it's very, very high tech and um, there are a lot of nuances you have to learn. So that's what I'm spending time learning after my first month of being here. You know, to answer your question, you know, people don't wear suits in this business. Um, it's much more casual. There's more flexible flexibility in terms of working hours and how people work. It's much smarter now. And the crypto business isn't so heavily regulated yet that it's, um, it has so many um, barriers to doing business. I think people are very pro-business in this new world. They want to get things done. They want to get things onboarded fast. We do a daily publishing of the uh, of the codes and uh, our Crypto and Coffee publication is is printed here. Just telling people what, what's happening in the what's happening you know today in the in the crypto world is there's, there's always something's happening. Right, right. And uh, a lot of things we do is is about bridging the gap, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's the gap with the traditional finance with old money. And uh, we bring in obviously new technology and uh, and uh, new uh, new way of doing business. Right, right. Quite different, obviously, because it is it's crypto. I mean, I've only been in crypto for uh, 11 months, effectively. Um, prior to that, a number of years at different institutions, uh, exchanges, and sort of big banks. So. Um, it's a different atmosphere. It's uh, more relaxed, but also a bit more high pressured because you've got quite a lot of stuff going on. Uh, obviously, we're trying to do things quicker than probably the bigger um, companies would normally do. Uh, they tend to have a lot more processes, a lot more people in, in sort of not in the way, but not almost creating barriers sometimes. Whereas here, we're a lot freer to do what we would like to do and, and try and do it quickly. But obviously, that means you've got a lot more things to try and juggle. Um, but it's good fun. Yeah, it's nice. It's a good atmosphere here. So. I guess one question, I mean, why aren't these institutional you know, players doing essentially what you're doing? I mean, are you, uh, are you nervous that they're gonna swallow up this kind of industry and just keep it in-house, or? Well, I come from the traditional prime broker and I've been building electronic trading desks for different banks. Mm -hmm. And right now it's, it's, it's basically, it's, it's another market. It's another mm -hmm. emerging market, in fact. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very much in a familiar kind of situation it's, it's another startup, it's, uh, it's another emerging market, it's the same product. Mm -hmm. And actually the clients are, are, are the same as well. So we, we talked to the, to, to the same guys I, I talked to 10 years ago, in fact. Right. Right, I see. I am just now leaving the Bquant office. Got a behind the scenes look at this exchange and what they're trying to do. And you know, they're, what they've been saying is that they're trying to be this bridge between the traditional financial system and the crypto industry, you know, uh, Vitalik Buterin, kids in hoodies, everything like that. So I can say it seems to kind of fit that mold. I didn't see anyone in a tie. I didn't see, you know, no one was uh, really busy and always on the phone. It seemed relaxed and uh, professional. Uh, so. You know, it was kind of a mix. They had uh, ping pong and pool, but not bean bags and you know uh, uh, video games to play. So I think it's really interesting, and I have to say my favorite part was the dog. I think having a dog in the office that cute is definitely going to help everyone have a better day. Um, so you know that's what we were doing today, and uh, George invited us out tonight to uh, check out some London pubs and. We'll see, it's Thursday, which he said is kind of a heavy night here. So we're gonna check it out and see what there is to do. So how's the rest of your day?
deck. It's not over yet. It's not over. It's really. not over yet. So we have a we have a call in uh, in uh, in a few and. Uh, Oh really? And then we can we can go back to the pub. Okay, all right, that works. <laughs> Get to the business. All right. So uh, got kicked out of the pub. Yeah. Yeah, I should have probably the, asked permission first. But not the first time. That's all right. We can film on the street, and hey, we can drink on the street too, right? All right so, cheers. Yes. Cheers. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty noisy for what a Thursday. Is it? Is it common? It's very common. Thursday is the big big night out. Yeah. More than the weekend. Absolutely. Well, I mean, why why waste the weekend for you know for hangovers when okay. you can when you can get you know face ship faced, ship faced, right? <laughs> face the ship yeah. on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> got to finish this quick as I I got a call in uh, thirty. In thirty. Okay. Yeah, All right. Legal and uh, it's final preparations for for a meeting in with the regulator. Right, right. You, you got. So uh, yeah. So I'm going to Malta. Let, let's go to Malta. You're going to Malta. Yes, when, I'm going to Malta. When's that? Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow? You yeah. just want to go to Malta yeah, tomorrow? Exactly. Yeah, okay. sure. Can we go to Malta tomorrow? It's a, it's a quick, quick bus ride. <laughs> uh, let's try Yeah, let's... Well, let's... Okay, let's try. Let's try to do it. Um, so, let's drink up and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> and then let's get some tickets, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to sunny Malta. Yeah, quite a bit better than uh, the weather in London, yeah, I'd say. Definitely, you need sun, sun shade. So how uh, how often are you here? About once once a month for about a week. We have to wrap up a lot of things on the regulatory side of things, and uh -huh. the, the team here is is getting bigger and bigger. So this is our office. That's great. Uh, so let's go check it out. London is very expensive, you know that, right? <laughs> so uh, Malta has the has all the perks, right. the, the sunshine, <laughs> Italian food, the sea, and right. well, yeah, so we're uh, we're going to meet the, the regulator in, in a couple of hours, presenting the uh, the business plan for uh, for the two of our businesses, the exchange and the, and the prime broker. So we are very excited about today, yeah, yeah. because the process finally is uh, getting kicked off. So your presentation, bridging the gap between traditional finance, emerging digital asset class. Yeah, you're just going to be introducing your business model to the regulators today, or exactly. Yeah, yeah the part of the part of the process is is, is presenting the, uh, the functionalities and the the operational and the management team mm -hmm. to the regulators, explain what we're looking to do, how we're looking to do that, and get the process. Rolling. Yeah, are they are they kind of concerned in the main vision, or they just want, kind of want to see the structures? Uh, it's they. I think the, the one of the main uh, first steps for the regular is to filter out the professional out of non-professional, mm -hmm. and 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 try to uh, understand the, the general direction of, of where where the business that we are looking to bring to the island okay. is going to go. So this is kind of like a handshake test, you know, just to, exactly. just to see if you're... A very you know. solid handshake right. test. Right, yes. I got you. <laughs> so we're on our way to the uh, meeting with the regulator. Uh, we're with the team. There's another taxi with uh, some of the rest of the team. And uh, yeah, we're going to go wish them luck and see what happens. Does it kind of feel like a first date? You know, like with, uh, the, uh, with the regulators. Uh, I guess I'm I'm an experienced dater. Uh -huh, I, got I you. don't get the crumbs in the stomach anymore. With with going on a date, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh -huh, I but, don't I don't get as uh, nauseous, you know, uh -huh. or anything like that. It's, so only the regulators can put butterflies in your stomach. Exactly, huh? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we we well prepared. Good, We've good. been working for it for, for, for a year, we've been preparing for mm -hmm. this. So it's, it, it's just, now we have, to, we have to go with the flow and show who we are and ask questions and get the ball rolling. Yeah, we're excited cool. about it. Yeah, Could you even exactly. go through this in London? I mean, is there not a at system the moment. for it? Yeah. No, not at the moment, but a lot of regulators are now looking into it. Mm -hmm. Maltese have gone probably a step ahead. With these, uh, you know, other regulators like in the, uh, in the UK or in the EU, do you think they're going to look at Malta as oh, yes. a path? Like Absolutely. Kind of well, you have to piggyback up something, right? And the, uh, these first steps, the practical steps that the Maltese regulator is taking, is definitely going to be put into the textbook of crypto regulation. Mm -hmm. 
to teach the kids. Uh -huh. And your name is <laughs> right the grown ups. As the footnote, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the financial history textbooks of the future. Exactly, yeah. Are going to be written about moments like this? Yeah. Absolutely. So I guess this is where we'll, where we'll leave yeah. you, yeah? So Thank good you. luck. Thank you. Cheers. We'll talk uh, <laughs> after. We'll uh, get a play by play after. So. Awesome. All right, Thank good you. luck. See you. Yeah, the, it was a kind of an interesting road to get here. Uh, the sidewalk was kind of disappeared for a little bit, but um, we figured that's kind of the, you know, the way to success. Sometimes it's a little bumpy at first, but that's how billion dollar companies are made. So while George and his team are meeting with regulators, we have some time just to kind of walk around. But I can tell you a little bit about the regulatory system here in Malta. So in November 2018, the Maltese government signed into law the Virtual Financial Assets Act, or VFA. Pretty much it was the first of its kind legislation. And it's an attempt to try to regulate a system that, for most of its history, has been kind of unregulated and not really monitored. But what's happening right now, it's all brand new. And companies like George's, they're a part of the process. They're working with regulators, trying to figure out the best framework. And those things are going to be set as precedent for future companies. So it's actually pretty exciting to see what's going to happen. So we were able to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look into this process. Now, this isn't the meeting with the regulators, but this is a kind of post meeting meeting with their legal advisors. Uh, and they're kind of discussing some of the issues that were brought up in the first meeting. Uh, some more details about the specific parts concerning like insurance or you know, which, uh, which assets they're going to offer. Uh, you know, everyone seems to be in a pretty good mood, so I'm thinking that the first meeting went pretty well. When do you think is the right time for regulation well, to step in? The time is absolutely now, and we've seen that with the recent announcement from the German regulators allowing German banks to uh, hold digital assets on the books and generally regulating the space. We've seen UK coming up with the uh, sort of a preliminary regulation regime where the uh, following AMLD5, the participants have to register with the EFC. So we've seen the first steps of mm -hmm. getting things regulated now and uh, that, that, that's going to that's gonna extend to other European, uh, major European economies as well. So, come on in here. We this is another office where we, we we get to get to use once in a while for our friends. This is something I I wanted to show you. Really interesting. Cool. Wow. Uh, it's uh, the original uh, Second World War Enigma machine, which is uh, as as we as we know, is one of the uh, the the. Uh, oh, wow. Is a mother of cryptography. Oh, it's what brought us here, basically. We, the, the cryptocurrencies and the regulation, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so excited when I when I saw this piece. Yeah, so it's one of, one of the original pieces. You see, everything is in, in German here. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, the guys told me that uh, the codes from the machine cost about the same as the machine. Really, the <laughs> so codes themselves. You can actually you huh. can actually buy the codes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's. Uh, that's a really cool piece. And so, can you take yeah. like what, what was it actually used for during like uh, during the war? Then yes, it was it was an encryption device for for Germans to communicate between each other, and everybody watched the, the uh, Turing movie about yeah. Alan Turing, Turing Cumberbatch, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, decoding and breaking the code of the of the Enigma machines that changed the uh, the uh, uh, Second World War quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Again, we're 100 years later in Malta yeah. with the Enigma machine, the mother of cryptography, talking about regulation in, 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 in a digital asset space in, in the cryptocurrencies. I always picture this kind of evolution of, of, of the crypto finance. You know, you have those uh, uh, homo sapiens, the, the, the monkey, and then yeah. it, it grows into a sort of a more 
human being. Uh -huh. So it, it, it's, it's like, you know, the, the monkey, a guy in a hoodie, and then you basically you envision a, <laughs> the, an investment banker. Uh -huh, with the tie. So I, think, I think that's where we, we, the evolution is moving towards the sort of a more professionalism and uh, more professional talent yeah. coming into the space. So, I mean, what is it for you then? What's the, you know, what's the reason that you're doing all this? Making money for the sake of making money is not really my thing, so I, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. I like building businesses and I, and I, I, I love to see it grow, mature, becomes, uh, and, 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 and bring value to the, to the clients and the investors and uh, become a sort of a mature business. So for, for, for us, the, or for myself, I mean, the, the, the goal is to make my baby a matured, uh, you know, matured adult and go into a, a life of big finance and, uh, and, and be successful. Crypto parenting, yeah? Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> I also see your socks I, uh, representing uh, Cointelegraph. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <We just laughs> Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.